Today I'm going to be reviewing and comparing the Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils versus the Pit Pastel pastel pencils. Now I don't have the original tin that the Pit Pastels come in, so I can't talk about that, but I do have the one for the Stabilo Thellos. And the tin to the Pit Pastels, from what I can see, is fairly close. Now, both of these come in a full set of 60, but they both come in sets of 12, 24, 36. The Stabilo comes in a 48 set as well, and then they both have a set of 60. Both of them come in a tin like this. And so when you open it up, you've got your first tray of the pastel pencils here. And then on the bottom, you've got your second tray. Now, the Stabilos also come with a blending stump and a kneaded eraser. And then I believe this was a little tiny sharpener here as well. Now, I do have to say the tray for the Stabilo pencils here is quite flimsy. So I'm keeping them in the tin right now, but I am going to eventually transfer them to a different storage system, but this just works for me right now. So this is a little chart that I've made up, and this is on a pastel matte paper, but this just compares the colors between the Stabilo Carbothellos and the Pit Pastels. But real quickly, I just want to touch on their light fast ratings. Now the Stabilo Carbothellos have a five star rating, so it goes from one to five, and they're saying that their five stars are the most light fast and their one stars are the least and they also have a couple that have no stars such as this magenta color now out of all of the pencils they have 22 five stars nine four stars 17 three stars and five two stars and i would cut the light fastness off at a number two because that's about the 50 year range for light fastness so that's what i would consider light fast so that gives you a total of 53 out of 60 pencils for the carbothellos that are light fast now that's pretty darn good i would say now for the faber castell pit pastels they do a star rating of one to three so again i am considering three and two light fast one not light fast so they have 35 number threes 11 number twos and 14 number ones so they have a little less that i would consider light fast so that gives you an overall 46 out of 60 that i would consider light fast for the pit pastels so light fastness is only really if you're doing commissions or selling your artwork because you want to make sure that they're paying for good quality products and their artwork's going to last, you know, 50, 100 years, at least their lifetime that they're paying for the products. So that's why I consider the lowest ones not good enough. But most of the time I'm just doing tutorials here on YouTube and then I'm going to make scans of them and offer prints. So keep this in mind whether you're doing commissions or you're just doing art for fun. Now as you see here, everything that I've got starred, I considered light fast. The ones that aren't starred are not light fast. So I just want to touch briefly on the colors themselves. So there is a little bit of difference between the Stabilo and the Pit Pastels. Now the Stabilo colors, I find they're a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more saturated, whereas the Pit Pastels are a little less vibrant and maybe a little more muted. Now it doesn't mean that they don't have some vibrant colors, but I just find some of their colors are a little bit more muted than the Stabilo ones are. But that means that they work really great in combination because if you want bright colors, you've got them with the Stabilos. If you want some more dulled down muted colors, you've got them with the Pit Pastels. So I find having both sets work really great. And another thing too, if you are considering the light fastness, you're gonna notice that some of the greens that aren't light fast are light fast in the Stabilo Carbothellos. So that's kind of cool. So like this 65, it's pretty darn close to that 590.95. If you mixed those two together, you'd get something pretty similar to that. So I like that aspect of it that some of the colors that aren't light fast here are a little bit more light fast over here. But again, if you look at those magentas and purples, I mean, those are really hard to get some light fast colors. Now this 160 is, whereas over here, some of these aren't. So, you know, if you are considering the light fastness, like 151, 390, this one's light fast, that one's not. So that's a nice part about this is ones that aren't light fast, you'll find in the other set. And same with ones that aren't light fast here, you're gonna find in this set. So I find using them together in combination is really great. So if you want bright poppy colors, if you're doing botanicals or fruits, then the Stabilo Carbothello colors might be better for you. If you wanna do more pet portraits or landscapes, then the Pit Pastels might be better for you just color wise. But again, I think they work really well together because there's only a couple of colors in this set that really truly overlap. All of them are slightly different, like even this 690 and the 183, like they're still slightly different. The yellows are slightly different, so these are a little bit more 
warm. The 205 is a little bit more opaque. This 105 leans a little bit more green. I would say that 106 and 210 are fairly close. Same with, you know, the 103, the 105. But again, this one's a little less opaque. This one's a little more opaque. So they sort of do have some different, you know, aspects to each of the colors. So there's really only a couple colors that overlap. So even if you were to get both 60 sets, you might only have like maybe two or three colors that are fairly identical, but honestly, like the underlying color under some of these colors are still different enough for me to justify the purchase of both 60 sets. Okay, so now I just wanna compare the two pencils themselves. So I'm gonna grab a Stabilo here and a pit pencil here. And one of the things that sort of irks me about the Stabilo pencils is they are so shiny. So if you're looking like in the tray here and you're trying to find a number, I find it so shiny that I can't see it. So what I'm actually gonna start doing is what I've done on this one here is just writing the numbers down on the gray part here so I can see them better. But that's the first difference because as you can see, the Pit Pastels are more matte, so they're a little easier to see. Now they both have the star ratings right on the pencil themselves, so you can see that. So this one has a two, this one has a three. Now neither of them have any color names, but I find the color names aren't that important anyway because I'm just looking at the color themselves. Now another difference between these two pencils is the Stabilo Carpathellos are a little bit softer, so they're gonna create a little bit more dust and lose their point a little quicker, whereas the Pit Pastels are a little harder in lead, so they're going to keep their point longer and they're going to create a little bit less dust, especially when using the pastel mat. So keep that in mind. So if you are doing pet portraits or you're coloring a lot of hair or something like that, then you may want to lean towards the Pit Pastels just because they're going to, you know, hold a point longer so you can get that fur texture or strokes in. But I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate them real quick on the Canson Me TNs and pastel mat here because I feel like these are probably the two most common papers. So first I'm just gonna show you that you can get, you know, nice strokes with both pencils. So I can get some nice fine lines. And again, this is the pit one. Now you can see it's a little bit harder, so I'm getting just a little bit finer points than these to be low. But again, they're fairly close. But the difference is once I start trying to fill in an area, and then if I wanna go back over top of that, so that's just two passes. But if I tap this down a little bit, I don't know if you can see that dust that it's created there, and that's just from going over it twice. Now, this Canton Metiens doesn't have the same tooth that Pastel Matte will, so I will demonstrate that again. But again, if I'm using this one, so see, it's a hard enough lead that it's not filling the tooth of the paper up that much for the first pass. If I come back over it with a second pass, again, it's not really creating that much dust. So if I try to, you know, that dust isn't coming off, so I could even do another pass here and I'm getting like one little tiny dust now I'm going to go ahead and really fill this in and even with that I'm just barely getting a couple so as you can see this can really lay down now if you're really like you know pushing it into the paper like that you're going to create a little bit of dust but again compared to the Stabilo here, if I were to do that, again, you can just see the amount of dust that comes off. So there is a difference there. Now going on top of Pastel Mat, I can do this and I'm really not gonna create that much dust. And same with this one. So if I tap those, like virtually nothing comes off. So that's the difference. So this is gonna fill up the tooth of the paper a little bit quicker because it is softer. This is gonna take a little bit longer to fill up the tooth of the paper. But again, if you're doing something like pet portraits and you need to layer a lot, you might wanna do a light layer with this just to sort of fill up the tooth of the paper. So you could do, you know, a light layer like this. Go ahead and blend that in. 
So you're just covering the, the texture of the paper. Then you can go ahead with your pits and create, you know, that fur texture or detail on top. Because these are hard enough, they're gonna go over the Stabilo pencils just lovely, amazingly. And even if you have a lot of pastel built up, this pencil is hard enough that it's gonna scrape through that soft pastel and still create those lines or those textures for you. So that's why I really like using them in combination. Now these swatches here are pan pastels. So I'm gonna show you how they go over top with the pan pastels. So now this one, you can see the Stabilo is, it's not really being able to get into the tooth of the paper because the tooth is already filled up. Now again, this is the Canton Me TNs, but on pastel mat, because there's so much tooth there, you can see how I can get it nice and opaque and it's gonna show up. So this is where your paper comes into play because I can virtually do almost as many layers as I want on pastel mat, whereas Canton Me TNs, you know, if you're using a soft pastel plus the pencils, you're gonna have a really hard time. So just bear in mind those differences between the pencils. And again, paper is so important. So that's why I always suggest using the pastel mat because this is gonna be your best paper or really any sort of sanded type paper. Now this is in between a regular paper and a sand paper. It's not quite sanded, but it's got enough tooth on it that it gets the job done well. So just keep that in mind. So the next thing I wanna talk about real quick is how to sharpen these pastel pencils. Now, my favorite way to sharpen these is with a crank sharpener, and I've got a video showing you two ways to sharpen them. So I've used a crank sharpener, and I've also gone ahead and used a blade to sharpen these. Now, both work exceptionally well. The only thing if you're using a regular sharpener or a crank sharpener, the pastel pencils will dull the blade down much quicker than colored pencils will or other mediums. But what I tend to do is, but what I find works is taking a woodless graphite pencil and in between every project, I will go ahead and sharpen that pencil through the sharpener and it just helps keep the blades nice and sharp. But honestly, it is super easy to sharpen these with a blade as well. So it just depends on your preference and I'll go ahead and link that video down below where I show you both methods but I just wanted to mention that, that um, these are pretty easy for a pastel pencil to sharpen either way. Now, my overall thoughts on these pencils, I think they're both great pencils and I like them both for different reasons. And that's why I feel like having both 60 sets works for me. Now, I use these in combination with my pan pastels as well, and all three of them work amazingly well together. I do like to use the pastel mat. Like I've said, that makes a huge difference using these products as well but I honestly have to say I would recommend both of them. Now, if you guys have other questions that I haven't mentioned in this video, please leave a comment down below with your question and I will be sure to come back and answer it. But if you've made it this far, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post my videos. If this information was useful for you, then give a like to the video and thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.